Hi there. So uh, this is a new video I'm working on. It was a topic which was suggested by one of my Patreon supporters. And it's a topic that I've been following uh, kind of loosely for the last couple of years. And that is uh, once again about mass fans, about switching them. As you can see, this is a TPH 3036. 3206, whatever. Uh, the main point is this is a gun MOSFET. So um, you can see that here uh, I got a power supply which uses this technology, gallium nitride, uh, it is called here. And basically uh, we're move manufacturers moving away from silicon to uh, um, gallium nitride because uh, it offers lots of advantages like um, in mass production it can be cheaper, it has a lower gate capacity so it can switch a lot faster. And switching faster is very important when you go in the higher frequency regions which, wait a minute, maybe I got it here somewhere, yeah. Which is important if you build power supplies because uh, you want to go uh, with a high frequency to have uh, small um, energy storage devices like capacitor and coils and being more efficient and when you uh, go in such high frequency range you want to switch as fast as possible to go through the uh, um, more power loss creating regions of the MOSFET uh, of the fat in this case it is not a MOSFET it is again fat uh, you want to go through those regions faster so um, in theory this sounds great and I actually just tested this scan fat against a MOSFET as you can see here I'm currently doing switching times and what is kind of very interesting in this case is um, usually I don't have those two components connected to test configurations those are a um, basically a RC snubber circuit because um, you will see that those GAN fats actually switch so fast uh, they can easily create problematic oscillations so here we got the uh, with the uh, snubber circuit uh, attached we can see the usual uh, waveform so we got so the green one is the gate uh, source voltage the usual square wave and then the drain source you got a bit of an oh sorry <laughs> didn't mean to do that oh boy now i messed it up completely go back to the usual yeah okay so uh here we got like before the waveform so um the uh, yellow one, a bit of an overshoot, a bit of an oscillation, but nothing too bad. Uh, the maximum voltage in this case is 17 volts. We're switching at 500 kilohertz. And now, I got my soldering iron here. Let's see what happens if we desolder the RC snubber. So, you can see I removed that. And look at the uh, uh, waveforms this time. I have to zoom out and have to trigger again. So these are, uh, those are this time the waveform. The gate still looks acceptable, but there is something wrong with the drain. I think there is a huge spike at the beginning when it turns off. And this spike is actually, uh, you can already see it, one division is 50 volts. So this spike is 119 volts. So. Yeah, with those, um, you always, uh, you obviously also got a similar problem with the uh, MOSFET, but with the GAN fats, it's just too much. So you have, you pretty much have to add. Let's put it back here. Uh, really not the best way how I do it right now, but better than nothing. So you can see we are back to normal values, and it triggers way better and. Yeah, Yeah, very interesting. So um, lots of things going on right now with this uh, video production. But I think it, sh it should be done with filming in two days. And yeah, maybe uh, hopefully it will be an interesting video about GAN fats and whether you should buy such new gallium nitride power supplies or whether you should just stick to the traditional one and there are no benefits from that. So you can find that out in the video. So, another small clip for the uh, GAN FET project video. So, uh, previously I compared the efficiency of two power supplies. Uh, this one supposedly uh, was using a GAN FET. Uh, I actually opened it up and the main power MOSFET here, which was attached to a big heatsink, 
uh, is apparently not a GAN fed. So uh, I searched for data sheets and I found one with a similar um, label and it says it's just a MOSFET. So I'm not sure, but uh, that's not a problem because uh, comparing power supplies like this is not a good idea when you just want to compare one component because when it comes to such power supplies, you got capacitors, you got uh, inductors, you got transformers. There are all kinds of different components which can of course all feature different power losses, efficiencies. So you cannot really isolate how good uh, this one change component is in such a power supply. And that is why I built up my own little switch mode power supply. This is just a buck converter. Um, I'm using a gate drive transformer to drive uh, either the MOSFET or the GAN FET. Uh, those are the two options. And those basically uh, switch on and off very fast. I'm using a frequency of 500 kilohertz, 10 volts peak to peak. And then I uh, change the duty cycle a bit just to get that sweet spot of 5 volts at the end. Here it's a bit, a bit low, but you know if I go 1% down to 53%, it jumps up to a bit too high, so not yeah, a bit too high, so I'm just going with the a bit lower one. But very interesting results, so I'm currently using the GAN FET and I'm getting 5 volts, 1 amp out. And what is now interesting is the input and that is actually 6.47 watts. So in this clip I cannot replace it with the uh, MOSFET, but if you're interested I already wrote it down in my script. Here is the rating for the uh, MOSFET. So the MOSFET used 6.67 watts on the input to get uh, 5 watts out basically. And this one only uses 6.47. So uh, just a small difference really. I have to calculate the efficiency, not much. Uh, this converter is obviously, uh, you can see it's not very uh, <laughs> well designed, well constructed. It's just a basic example, but it shows that there is a difference. It's not very huge. But uh, the higher you also go with the frequencies where the switch on and switch off times are important and the power losses uh, when switching goes higher, of course, because uh, the higher you go with the frequency, it is proportional to the power losses for the switching. Uh, then it becomes more important. So with 500 kilohertz, you can already see there is a difference. And I think that's super interesting. And you will see it in the final video, my verdict. But so far, I'm having lots of fun with uh, GAN FETs. So yeah, I hope you're looking forward to that. So I'm not sure if you can see this, but there's something missing. <laughs> Who would have guessed? Um, this is where my greenhouse was. It was because uh, it actually flew away. It was apparently not uh, well enough attached to the ground and it just took off. And as you can see in the background, there's actually the parts of it. Um, kind of sucks, um, but it gives me the opportunity to rebuild this greenhouse and I will do it better. Uh, not any more of this lightweight aluminum stuff which will flow away. Uh, I will build it with wood, um, with a flying foundation I would say. You will see it in the video I think. Um, it will um, withstand the next storms. I actually thought this would withstand it, but no, <laughs> it didn't. Um, so yeah, I will now get, I already bought all the things I need um, when it comes to the wood. And, and I will now use uh, this trusty fellow here after I removed all of this um, to get it here. And I will show you all the material when I did that. So after an hour of transporting wood, here is hopefully all the material I will need. Um, the main construction will be made out of this uh, 9 cm by 9 cm by uh, 1 meter 85 and those will actually get um, attached to the ground with those so you basically hammer those in the ground and then you can put the wood on top here just, just like it was done here and with that we will basically then combine um, with those uh, being the outer posts and then combining six of them to get the shape and for the ceiling um, we will so then we got uh, some smaller wood which will be used for um, some um, inner um, how do you say it um, to basically um, give it a bit more structure stuck structural integrity 
and for that we got the smaller wood and then we got a bit thicker one for the ceiling um, for the roof we will see how we will do that and then we got a bit of plastic um, which usually used for a greenhouse but I would try to reuse lots of it from the old one so just a bit uh, in case we miss some and then lots of brackets screws all that good stuff and yeah <laughs> I'm a bit tired now um, that took around an hour to get this material from my car to here and then I also had to today get it from the home improvement store so it all took a while and those th things will not be in the main video but you also have to do them <laughs> and it can be a bit difficult sometimes but yeah so far looking good and this will now lay in my small house here for five days and then I will start with the construction. So here I am working on a new project. This time it is about my new auto transformer, which is quite huge. It can actually output uh, 3000 volts ampere. And because of such a big, um, I would say inductive device, um, there's a big coil inside. Um, other devices, uh, components, appliances, however you want to call it, uh, which come with such inductive components of, for example, motors. Uh, there you always got the problem when you start them up, when you connect them to mains voltage, uh, that there can be a big current spike. And for me, that is the case with this transformer. Uh, it basically trips my circuit breaker uh, every second time I connect it. And that is why I'm currently working on an AC soft starter circuit. And this is basically just a very crude and simple solution. Uh, as the first example, I will build a better circuit, I would say, uh, in a couple of minutes. And what this basically does is on the output, we got the uh, auto transformer connected in series. On the input, we basically got um, a small DC voltage, which we can activate with the switch. And this is a solid state relay, which uh, has zero crossing switching integrated. So basically put, uh, it always connects the load when it is near the zero crossing point. And this can for some cases be the solution because then uh, uh, you do not uh, connect it to the mains voltage when it's for example at the highest peak then there would be a huge current spike if you connect as a zero zero point uh, the magnetic field has some time to build up and thus uh, create enough resistance to not have such a big current spike so uh, this is uh, a solution for that and i just want to show you if i push it then you can see it turns on and the transformer also powered up without any problems so this is just the simple solution. Yeah, it's it's a crude solution because I have to hold the button to turn it on. If I let go, then boop, it's gone. But yeah, uh, this is the first example and I will now build a better circuit, I would say. So my workbench is a mess, which can only mean one thing. The circuit works. <laughs> um, it was, I uh, actually, I was quite impressed how fast I uh, got to a usable product. Uh, product DIY circuit I would call it. Um, I designed this, built this, created an enclosure currently 3D printing it that is what you might hear in the background and programmed it all yesterday and today I'm just doing the tests and currently I'm trying it with a light bulb so we can try that for ourselves. Let's plug, get this off there. Okay let's plug it in. Oh boy this is much harder than so it is plugged in, uh, the circuit is now hot, the uh, light bulb is connected to the triac and the point of the circuit is to basically slowly start the light bulb. And how does it do that? I will show you with the oscilloscope. So I'm setting it up here um, for capturing a very long time, like 200 milliseconds per division, so about one second. And this light basically tells you, okay, it is time you can AC soft start and with this button, we basically initiate that. And the green one says that the process um, started successfully. And I will show you how to do that now. Whoop. The green one is now on and you can see the light bulb. Uh, I hope you saw that in the video. It slowly got brighter. And here you can see how that looks on the oscilloscope. So basically at the beginning, at the start, we have a very low phase angle you can see uh, the yellow ones are the uh, um, pulses which the uh, uh, optocoupler gets and then gets uh, to the triac so at the beginning very little and then you can see the uh, green wave is actually the mains voltage waveform 
you can see after a bit of time um, we get more here you can see uh, that is the applied AC voltage we get more and more and that's basically the principle just slowly increasing uh, the applied AC voltage and it, this continues on and on until we got pretty much the complete waveform then the uh, time is so minimal that it's pretty much always on I think that's the maximum so yeah pretty much always on and that is basically how I designed uh, the soft starter and now I will have to try it with my auto transformer which is of course a way bigger load so I will see how that will turn out so everything works decently with the soft starter circuit uh, it is now in this uh, enclosure 3d printed yeah the 3d print didn't turn out that well uh, my 3d printer had some problems but um, it's usable I would say and yeah with it you can basically soft start in this case my auto transformer uh, what I realized though when you watch the video uh, I will talk about that it's not always that simple you got different inductive loads they need different um, strategies sometimes uh, what I try with the uh, face angle control will not work for your loads um, that can also happen if the inductive load is just too big and yeah they're just it's not simple I would say like this I expected it to be a bit more simpler the topic uh, easier to explain but in the end uh, it will be an interesting video I think but it's uh, more complex than you would imagine so but I got a result I just wanted to show you so let's just plug this in Oh god, get it in there nicely. Yeah, now it's red. And if we hook up this and then we can push the button. And it does sound very scary. Uh, and that's basically how we soft started. Right now it is green, so that worked without a problem. And yeah, the video uh, will be done soon. This was the final test. And I hope it will be interesting. Of course, this is AC voltage, so uh, for me, uh, for you, it's just more to watch and understand how it works. I don't really encourage many people to try this on their own uh, if they're not skilled in this area, but I think it is definitely worth showcasing. It is important. Um, it is often used. So, yeah, I hope you're looking forward to the video and always respect mains voltage. <laughs>